In the summer of 2013, I had the opportunity to be a part of an internship program that granted minority college students exposure to health professions that lack diversity. This internship was a great experience since I had the pleasure of shadowing and learning from great clinicians that looked like me. Not only that, but we related to one another on a different level since we shared similar backgrounds and similar upbringings. This opportunity was truly inspiring because those physical therapists helped me realize that with diligence and determination, obtaining a doctorate degree in physical therapy was not unattainable. From there, I learned that building relationships and connections with my patients was crucial to obtaining better outcomes and a successful recovery after an injury, a recent surgery, or someone suffering from a neurological condition. I especially found this to be true when I treated patients that were from minority groups or people of color. Often they would say to me and thank me that they were happy to see a clinician that looked like them. Today I want to discuss how a lack of diversity within certain healthcare professions is a health disparity affecting people of color, people living in rural areas and low income populations. But before I get into that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Kiana Howard and I am a licensed physical therapist. I primarily practice in outpatient orthopedics where I treat various diagnoses from musculoskeletal injuries, neurological conditions, and people that have undergone surgery. Since I've been practicing, I treat a wide variety of people from different ages, races, religions, people living in rural areas, or people from different socioeconomic statuses. Thankfully, I've been told by my minority patients how they appreciate me because they feel that their health concerns are being properly addressed. It's mostly known and trending that racial minority populations are at a higher rate for contracting chronic health conditions than their white counterparts. These conditions may include high blood pressure, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. Because there is such a wide difference between whites and non-whites likely to contract a chronic health condition, this is categorized as a health disparity. A health disparity is basically health differences between different groups of people. Some differences may include how many people contract the disease, the severity of the disease, how many people die from it, and how many people actually have proper access to health care to get screened for these diseases. Others may say health disparities are linked with different factors, such as social factors, economics, and environmental factors. Unfortunately, minority groups are more likely to have suboptimal care and higher rates of poor health outcomes than whites in some disease cases. So could the lack of diversity in certain healthcare professions also be linked to health disparities? Let us turn our focus to the demographics and look at how we are actually being represented in certain healthcare professions. Pictured here is a graph of the United States population. A larger portion is comprised of white Americans at 76.3%, followed by Hispanic Latino at 18.5 and black Americans at 13.4. The next image highlights physician populations by race. Similar to the U.S. population graph, white Americans still make up a large portion of the medical doctors. However, all minority groups except people that identify as Asian are underrepresented in this profession. Now let's take a look at the physical therapy profession. As noted in the previous graph, white Americans still maintain a large portion of the physical therapy population. And all minority groups except those that identify as Asian are underrepresented in physical therapy. So how do we fix this issue? How do we improve the representation of racial ethnic minorities in healthcare? Primarily, there must be a pipeline system or some type of strategy in place to ensure that disadvantaged and underrepresented groups are represented. A lot of reasoning behind the lack of diversity in healthcare is due to the lack of exposure of different healthcare professions to minority students. For me, I was exposed to physical therapy 
in ladder high school only because I had an ankle injury from running track. But what about those students who are not student athletes? Those students whose families may not have enough health care coverage to pay for a physical therapy session. How will those students know about the career or any other health care career that is underrepresented? This pipeline model has many levels, beginning from early childhood all the way to the medical professional. Getting kids exposed to different healthcare professions before college is important as they think about what they want to do for a living. The next level is the undergrad experience, which is vital for shadowing, volunteering, and getting exposure into the profession before applying to graduate school. Thereafter is the graduate admission process which is key to having people on these review boards advocate for people of color to be accepted into these programs. Finally, licensure preparation is also important. This is important to ensure these students successfully pass their examination and be licensed medical professionals. An example of a successful pipeline is based on a study done at the Ohio State University School of Medicine and the University of California post-baccalaureate programs. These programs aim to help promising college graduates from disadvantaged and underrepresented backgrounds get into and succeed in medical school. From these efforts, researchers have found that the post-baccalaureate graduates were more likely than non-post-baccalaureate graduates to practice medicine in high poverty communities, high Latino and black communities. Nonetheless, research has shown time and time again that patients from minority groups that are served by healthcare providers that look like them have better outcomes. In another example, a study performed in Oakland, California, randomly assigned black men to black and non-black doctors to examine the demand of preventative care. From this, they found that black males assigned to black doctors increased their demand for preventative care services. These services include things like getting the flu shot, monitoring their blood pressure, monitoring their blood sugar, and monitoring their overall health. From the same study, researchers also predicted a 19% drop in the black-white male cardiovascular mortality gap, an 8% drop in the black-white male life expectancy gap. Ultimately, increased racial minority representation in healthcare is crucial because diversity is associated with positive health outcomes. These outcomes would include things like increased access to health care for minorities, improved patient provider communication, improved patient satisfaction, and lower morbidity and mortality rates among minority groups. The lack of diversity in health care is a health disparity for racial minorities and disadvantaged groups. Many health care organizations and professional schools are addressing these issues, but we still have a long way to go when it comes to diversifying the system. Hopefully this talk can start a conversation and give you guys some insight on how we need to change and increase the need of minority health professionals. Not only to reflect the people we serve, but to positively change the trajectory of how we treat patients and meet the continuing needs of the overall population. Thank you.